Hey guys, Armageddon here with a fun, a fun video today. We're gonna do some shooting, but most importantly, we're gonna compare and contrast the AR-15 traditional platform versus a bullpup. Today, the bullpup is gonna be a TAR-21 Tavor. We're gonna compare and contrast, tell you guys the benefits and the drawbacks of going with either or over the other. So the experiment is basically gonna be two mags through each gun, two five round mags, one mag, then we're gonna do the the reloading procedure so you guys can see the manual of arms and how that works and then a second one and then we're going to go inside because it's negative 25 degrees today freaking cold and uh well i don't want to completely lose the feeling in my toes also my camera will only take so much of this before it just turns off itself so i can't shoot this one today for reasons that are kind of dumb but the law is the law hopefully if this channel continues to grow, I'm hoping to do a, an actual legal range back here. And then I can shoot SBRs, pistols, you know, actual ARs, all that kind of stuff back here. That's hopefully coming later this year. I can shoot this guy because it's considered non-restricted in Canada, has a full 18.6 inch barrel. And in place of this awesome PWS shorty, we're gonna shoot a full-size Canadian equivalent AR. Um, somehow designed to skirt the laws and uh, well not skirt the laws but just it's kind of dumb and arbitrary what they've done to the AR up here but this one is considered not an AR it is a unique receiver but it takes a lot of AR components and for the point of this video you know really it's a side charging AR so we're just gonna go with that so we're gonna run this AR first also apples to apples comparison this also has an 18.6 inch barrel, just like the Tavor. So let's uh, let's put some rounds on steel. Get loaded. We are hot. All right, here we go. Just backing up, making sure that I've got uh, clear sight lines beyond my target. Nothing but field for six miles. All right, here we go. Okay, last round, full hold open. Gonna drop our mag. Reload. Hit that bolt release. Back on target. Another five rounds. All right, very nice. Smooth shooting gun, soft recoil. ARs, full length ARs like this generally recoil pretty light. So we'll set that guy aside. And now for the bullpup. Well, no, we're not using the Surefire 100 rounder, which is pinned to five. Grab this mag, get it in there. Drop the mag, reinsert, hit that bolt release, back on target. All right, so we're clear. And that's, uh, that's the TAR-21. Let's jump inside and discuss, discuss this shooting elements and uh, the other trade-offs. Hey guys, and we're back, back inside, warming up here, and the guns are warming up as well. Actually, the Tavor, polymer, this is really where polymer shines, uh, either in really hot conditions or wet conditions or, you know, cold conditions, um, because this, you know, does really well with moisture, and it does really well with not conducting heat or lack thereof, whereas this gun was just, oh, crispy to the touch, and now that it's warming up, it's got a nice layer of condensation on it, uh, which the Tavor doesn't. Kind of interesting, kind of interesting. Actually, the Spectre, Spectre DR here too, just a couple minutes ago, was just covered in condensation as well, and it's all just evaporated here. So it's kind of interesting that that one, uh, whatever finishes on there seems to have evaporated quite a bit quicker than, than this. I'm not sure what the tendency or what the science behind that would be, but 
But nonetheless, uh, plastic versus metal would be a good topic for another video, another kind of versus video, kind of like this one. And on that note, I wanted to make a quick point of clarity. Uh, this is indeed ARs versus bullpups. Um, and not specifically to Vores, just bullpups in general. I could have also made the case for just standard guns in general, um, that included things like the FAL, the SCAR, um, the Robinson Armament, XCR, things like that. But I did want to keep it a bit more, a bit more reined in. Three different areas that we're going to discuss, uh, compare and contrast these guns. One is going to be size, and that's got three aspects I'm going to talk about. The next one is going to be flexibility, that's got two aspects, and then finally ergonomics. So that's that's the show. That's what we're going to do here. So let's jump on in with topic number one. Uh, and actually, quick pause. Following that discussion, I'll bring in the bonus gun, which is a which is a good classic. You guys, I'm sure will love. And I'm also going to bring in the gun for next week. I'll bring it back at the end, but uh, here's just a quick peek. The Terran Tactical Combat Master. This thing is oh super cool. But this is the feature firearm for next week. Also going to be in SHOT Show next week. So lots of content coming for that. But I will talk about that again towards the end. Let's get back into the AR versus the bullpup. All right, so point one, size. Size does matter. It's... Whether you're bigger or smaller, it is just important to discuss the trade-offs. This is uh, this is going downhill quickly. Um, so, size, relatively speaking, I I had this other AR out there originally. This is a PWS Diablo with a 7.75 inch barrel, and I, I actually I had the Tavor, and I'm pretty much you know the Tavor is the Tavor. It's this size. I have an 18.6 inch barrel, so it's pretty much fixed. I did want to go and find an AR that closely resembled it uh, for this comparison. And when I lined up the barrel, um, the tips of the barrel, the triggers lined up perfectly with this little guy here. I lack the length of pull. Tavor's just got a long length of pull on that guy, um, yet it's comfortable. But this little PWS couldn't reach all the way out there. The barrels are close. The barrels are about a quarter inch out. Um, not very much. That's like half a centimeter, roughly. Um, this is a bit shorter. So you could argue you could have that. You could have an eight-inch, an AR with an eight-inch barrel, and uh, we're still lacking about an, an inch and a half off the back that this should technically have on it to match up. But that's just gonna just gonna put that out there and, and cover that off. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's what you're kind of looking at. So say an eight-inch AR versus a Tavor with an 18.75 inch barrel, sorry, six inch barrel. So it's about 11 inches difference, thereabouts, say 10 and a half just for, for round numbers. And now these guns are all chambered in 5.56 five, or 223, it doesn't really matter. When you're comparing these two things, one important aspect is gonna be the difference in the barrel length. And you, it doesn't matter if it's eight versus 18 and a half. If you cut this back to a four and you cut that back to you know, a 14 and a half, same thing. This package is still going to be, they're going to be relatively the same size. And at some point, that really starts to matter for cartridges like the 5.56. Five, this is meant, this excels out of a long barrel. I believe actually it's the, my, my uh, video of the week a couple weeks ago was the SIG 5.50 five, uh, five, five, Sniper. That gun had a barrel of 25.6 inches, which was meant to be optimized for the 5.56 five, cartridge to just squeeze every little bit of velocity out of it. Now, your gains are going to be less to scale at that point. Um, 18.6 inches, you're getting a ton of velocity already. You're probably at about 5.56, five, squeaking out close to 3,000 feet per second. Now I'm guessing out of an eight inch barrel, you're probably losing five, 600 feet per second. I'm gonna actually look up that number and drop it in the uh, correction section below. If you guys wanna check that out in the description, I will actually look up what it is, what a 5.56 five, or a 223 does out of an eight inch versus an 18.5 inch and give you that comparison. You guys can decide from there how important that is as of a consideration for you. Um, but basically, in any way you shake the stick, it's going to be about 10.5 inches between a traditional AR and at least a Tavor. The obviously bullpups are going to vary a little bit based on what Tavor you've got, but or what bullpup you've got rather. But that's uh, that's the best I can compare it to today. So that's aspect one of size. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna say here too, for me. For, for philosophy of use, what these things are going to be used as, I'm really a proponent of SBRs. My my last five guns video, which was last weekend that I put out, was the five most practical guns. 
uh, for everyday life. And I didn't have a single rifle in there, semi-automatic rifle with a long barrel. I went for SBRs. I think they're more practical. There's a few scenarios that you require an 18.5 inch barrel or an 18 inch barrel, whatever. Um, very few scenarios in a 223 cartridge over just something small and compact and easily maneuverable. So that's that was one point I was gonna make. Second aspect on size is going to be like maneuverability, obviously. So now if we're gonna go apples to apples again and go barrel length as the as the fixed point, we'll get rid of this guy and we'll bring the conversation back to these two. 18.6, 18.6. Now, if you're running around a building or any kind of combat situation with this, if you're tight quarters, this is way nicer. Um, this gun is just standing out from you a whole heck of a lot further. And that's most evidently seen if we line up the butts and then just look at this difference in barrel length. Pretty crazy. Yes, this is a muzzle device on it, which is making it longer, but so does this. So that's that's a pretty huge difference. Um, definitely can can be a lot more, you know, sleek, compact running around with this guy than this guy without giving up anything in terms of that barrel length, that feet per second, your your ultimate range. Now you could argue if you're trying to be really compact and move around a tight building, you probably don't need that range, and that would be a valid point. The final aspect of size is gonna be handling and balance, balance being key. Now that's where a bullpup is gonna excel because bullpups tend to be more back heavy or at least they balance really well over the grip. Um, this, the Tavor, mine wants to tip back a little bit, but that's okay, it's tucked into my shoulder. It's really easy, I can hold this gun with one hand all day and even accurately shoot. I can see through my red dot, line it up and I can shoot just fine. Doing that with this, with that long barrel sticking out, um, doable, but I already feel more fatigue in my arm. So that's a very important consideration. Just balance and handling. I'm mean, definitely gonna give it to the Tavor in that respect. All right, guys, category two is flexibility. And I know I said I was gonna talk about it in two ways, but really as I've been talking here, it kind of boils down into one. Really, when you're talking about flexibility, what you're, what you're referring to, what I'm referring to, is modularity, adjustability, and customization. Uh, for the end user. And that's, <sighs> I'm gonna say it right now, this gun has all that on on, on lockdown. Um, and that's because the AR-15 has been around for 50 years. This is basically a household item in the States and a bit of a controversial thing probably to say, but there's just so many of these things out there. There's so many guys making these things and making components for them. I mean, you got handguards, barrels, grips, stocks, even small things like safeties, mag releases, bolt catch and release. Tons of features, tons of adjustability, tons of customization. You, as the end user of this rifle, can basically tailor this thing to your every wish and desire. Side charging uppers, like it just, it just doesn't end. And contrast that against the Tavor, or actually any bullpup for that matter. The Tavor is actually a pretty good example. There's actually been a decent number of aftermarket support for this thing to help address the lack of innate adjustability in a bullpup platform. Um, but look at other bullpup platforms like FS2000, PS90, a lot of those things really, it's, you get what you get and that's it. It works or it doesn't. Um, and that's the reason I chose the AR-15 to face off against the bullpups, right? Because this, this gun really just is such a stark contrast to the bullpup in this category that I just felt it would really highlight that aspect well. I did want to talk about one other bullpup that did actually address this issue of lack of adjustability pretty well. Cause the gun's just, there's no length of pull adjustment. This gun, even this PRS DMR stock, length of pull adjustments. Um, or you could just swap the stock. Obviously with this, you can't, you've got a naturally long length of pull, but there's a company in Croatia of all places that makes handguns and bullpups. And their bullpup is called the VHS uh, and the VHS2. The company is called HS product. Honestly, look up the gun. Do yourself a favor, it's it's really cool. It looks like a G36 was turned into a bullpup. That's the best way I can describe it. Actually, I thought it was an HK product when I first saw it, um, which is which is kind of funny. Uh, shout out to Richard. I kind of embarrassed myself telling him that HK made a bullpup at one point. Anyways, that's a inside joke. Um, but look it up 
uh, you'll probably see the video by Vickers Tactical, which is do yourself a favor and watch that. It's pretty sick seeing that thing run in slow-mo and full auto. Really cool guns though. And uh, props to them for trying to adjust, address that issue. So that's cool. So anyways, again, I said it from the start, AR-15 has this category and flexibility hands down. Now let's jump into the final category, ergonomics. It's kind of funny. Every time I say ergonomics, I kind of think in my head I said economics and I just totally went way off base, but no, we're talking about ergonomics and, and that's and the controls of the gun. So as you saw when I was shooting the gun, reloading the gun, the manual of arms, you know, for a bullpup, your your administration work stuff's back here. If you've got a malfunction or something, you're dealing with, you know, the, the chamber in there, or if you're shooting it lefty, you know, it's going to be in here. This is convertible. This is, can be a lefty friendly gun if you convert it over, um, but you're working back here. Now there's a number of ways to address this magazine problem. You can you can bump it like this. That way you don't have to take your you know you don't have to really remove the gun too much from your person. Um, but you're coming back here. Bolt release is over here, which is still pretty pretty tactical. I mean it's got its got its place. You can still re put in the mag and drop the bolt in one motion essentially, much like an AR. Safety is still like an AR. Um, but it's just, it's probably easier because you can actually see what you're doing up here. You know, you can see this really easily. It's, it's more in front of you. It's not really back here. Um, so you don't have to really maybe move your, there's less, less maybe macro adjustments to, to make, to, to get to function. So this, everything is all right in front of you. Boom, done. I find that's a little bit easier on an AR. It's going to be what you train with too, which is going to be very important. You can train around a lot of this stuff. And again, modern bullpups are, they're just, they're not trying to beat the AR anymore. They're just trying to join it. And they're taking a lot of the AR, the cues from the AR ergs and incorporating that within their system. Even the new version of the Tavor Tar 21, the X95, that has an AR-esque mag release. So that's, that's cool. Tavor 7, same thing. And uh, the Desert Tech MDR, same thing. So they're getting there. Bullpups are getting better every day. Just saying. While the AR may be a more flexible platform with better ergs, manual of arms, size matters. And the Tavor, I don't know if you remember, but the Tavor pretty much killed it in that category. So just gonna, this guy, pat on the back for that. Uh, at the end of the day, I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna, I'm going to close off this segment with a, uh, a quote from Dan Haga. I just saw this post on Instagram today and it made me laugh. If the question is which, as in, you know, Tavor or AR-15, the answer is always both. And I thought that was pretty great. And I thought applied to this. So I said that and that's how I feel too. I mean, you don't have to choose. If you, if you really don't have to choose one or the other, get both, enjoy the benefits of both. Train with them more, see what you like more. This gun for me is the most I shoot out of a 223. At least it was in 20, you know, in previous years. I'm gonna try and switch it up this year and kind of force myself to pick something else just to get a bit more well-rounded. But uh, definitely awesome platform. Love it, love it, love it. Bonus gun time. And I mean, I gave you guys two ARs in this video, so I thought, you know what? I better balance things out, just to be fair. Better give you another bullpup, and what bullpup would be better than the Ageless PS90? Or P90 if you prefer, but this one is a uh, semi-auto only, so PS90. Oh, what a great little gun. Not uh, 5.56, this is a 5.7 by 28, that really cool Gucci, you know, secret agent man caliber, 5.7 by 28. I'm going to get flamed out for making that remark in the comments, but whatever. Um, I love shooting this thing. It's super fun, super fun to shoot. I do have a shooting video as well as a disassembly. This thing is crazy easy to take apart and a bit of an overview on this thing as well. If you want to search back a few months in my channel, uh, it's a way back there, by the way. Um, I am, I am a new channel. I'm like four or five months in. So again, I, I'm honestly, I know I'm new at this. I know I'm naive and I make some mistakes and I say some silly things once in a while. I, I like feedback though, and I want to improve. So if you notice something that I did funky in this video, hit me in the comments below. Let's chat about it and uh, let's let's get better. I want to get better. Um, I love doing this kind of stuff. It's a ton of fun. Um, I bring a lot of my collection in here. I bring also a lot of guns from buddies, 
Again, everything you see is not just mine. I do have, I've been collecting guns for a long time, which is why I have a decent collection. That's kind of all I've been collecting for a few years. I don't really have a crazy car or anything like that. I just have a decent job and a crazy passion for guns. But I do borrow stuff from time to time, such as this Terran Tactical. As I mentioned, this is the feature gun for next week. Though I'm only borrowing it for a couple days because I'm going to SHOT Show. Um, so I've got an overview video and a disassembly video. So those drop Monday, Tuesday and then it's right into SHOT Show. And then with any luck, I'll be able to borrow this gun again and do a shooting video um, in, a, in a couple weeks, because this thing is just wicked and I definitely have to get some range time in with it. But uh, if again, if you guys like the channel, please consider jumping over to Patreon. I got some extra content on there. If you guys, again, if you want to support the channel, 100% appreciate that. All that support goes back into making better quality videos for you guys. As next week is SHOT Show, this video is dropping Sunday. I am literally filming this on Sunday. Hopefully this video is up within a couple hours of me finishing this, this spiel. Um, but starting Wednesday, I'm going to be at SHOT Show on the floor doing videos. Going to be seeing great companies like Deadfoot Arms, Zero Compromise Optic. Oh, there's so many. There's so many. I've got actually plans to see a lot of them. Um, so let me know if there's anything specific you guys want to see. Jump in the comments and uh, I will do my best to get coverage on those items. Thanks a ton, guys. Armor gun out.